Hello, it's me, Marilia. Ah, welcome to Salto del Gato. Today I have a doozy of a story for you. I have to tell you that I wasn't even going to go here. I was not going to get involved in telling this story. Why? Because it is so bizarre that it's hard to believe. But even more than that it's bizarre, it's incredibly disturbing, incredibly disturbing on so many levels. Not just because there's multitude of crimes involved, but because of the vulnerability of the human mind to be led into these kinds of situations. Yes, I guess you guessed it. It is the Lori Vallow Daybell and Chad Daybell story. Let's go there. Money, sex, power, and extremist religious views. The Lori Vallow Daybell and Chad Daybell story. Let me tell you a story. It involves a gorgeous beauty queen and her ordinary grave digger turned novelist turned missionary lover. They join forces and become cult leaders whose mission is to gather the 144,000 surviving souls after the coming apocalypse scheduled for July 2020. Shad had already launched an offshoot religious group, but it was after Lori joined him that things became lethal. Both Lori and Shad came from the tradition of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, formerly known as Mormons. It should be noted here that the LDS Church has issued a letter asking their members and specifically their leaders not to discuss anything involving legal matters with anyone outside of the church. The letter was signed by the bishop of the LDS Church. Chad Daybell and Lori are excommunicated by the church. Get ready. This is a doozy. There's a long list of characters and it's best to go ahead and name them so we don't get lost because there's so many people involved. Let's begin with Lori Daybell. She's protagonist number one. Chad Daybell, protagonist number two. Alex Cox is Lori's brother suspected of murdering the children, and he shot and killed Charles Vallow, which is Lori's fourth husband. Now, Alec died suddenly of natural causes. Charles Vallow was Lori's fourth husband, now deceased. They were married approximately 14 years. Chuck Ryan is Lori's now only surviving adult son, and he was a child of her and her second husband, but raised by her third husband, Joel Ryan, and Chuck took Joel's last name. Tylee Ryan is the murdered daughter of Lori and Joe Ryan. That's Lori's third husband who died by natural causes of a heart attack. Now, J.J. Vallow is Laurie's murdered son, and he was being raised by Charles and Laurie, but he was the biological child of Kay's son, born out of wedlock to a drug-addicted mother. Kay became his guardian, but later her brother, Charles Vallow, and his second wife, Laurie, adopted him. Kay Woodcox is Charles Vallow's sister. Larry Woodcox is Kay Woodcox's husband. Melanie Bordeaux is Lori Daybell's niece. Brandon Bordeaux is Melanie Bordeaux's ex-husband who was shot at. More about that. Now there's another character named Melanie. Her name is Melanie Gibbs. And she was a member of the cult and friends with Lori. Tammy Daybell is the deceased wife of Chad Daybell. Chad is accused in murdering Tammy. Sulema Polence is the last wife of Alex Cox. Wow, let's all breathe. The murders of Tylee, then 16-year-old, and JJ, 7-year-old, took place approximately three years ago in Redsburg, Idaho. Lori and Chad are both charged in the murders of these children. However, their cases were severed and Lori is now standing trial in Ada County in Idaho for her part in the crime. That surprised everyone because these two, we thought they were never going to separate, but it might be that they're beginning to turn on each other. Now, 
this is so convoluted. Let's go over the timeline, and then eventually we'll get to the backstory. <clears throat> Chad Daybell was married to Tammy Daybell, and they had five children. They had moved to Rexburg, Idaho, about three years prior. Chad had a fascination with the end times and death. He worked as a grave digger. He also wrote fictional novels about the apocalypse and the end times. At some point, Chad claimed that after having experienced an NDE, that's near-death experience, while he was swimming, where he almost drowned, he was enlightened and began receiving spiritual downloads about his role in the preparation for the end times. Now, to Chad, his writings were not perceived as fiction. He saw them as real downloaded messages from God. It is said that Tammy didn't necessarily buy into Chad's beliefs. Chad also launched a publishing business where he published works of other authors on similar themes, and he also published podcasters. Chad was a member of a fringe group called the Avow, A-V-O-W, and they had a podcast where they discussed their beliefs. Avow is an extremist, apocalyptic-oriented group, and they all shared similar beliefs and held to the same principles. They discussed ways to prepare, as well as their concerns about the end times and how to rid the world of evil spirits. Lori had been reading many of Chad's books for several years prior to their meeting. She had a deep interest in what Chad wrote about and shared the beliefs around the end times. Now, these beliefs of hers were established years in advance of her meeting Chad Daybell. But in 2018, her friend Melanie invited her to go to a religious conference. So they two of them traveled together. And there, Chad happened to be speaking and also selling his books. So Melanie approached Chad's table, and there Lori joined her and was introduced to Chad, and they clicked. A few weeks later, Lori hosted a gathering at her house in Arizona, and several people attended. Among those were Lori, Chad, Melanie Gibbs, Alex Cox, and Sulema. And there they discussed all the topics mentioned above, as well as Dark Souls, zombies, and casting out these evil spirits. Yes, I said zombies. These sessions were called casting sessions. And after this, Laurie and Chad were in constant daily contact, either phone calls, texts, emails. Now, move forward to January of 2019. We see this video that surfaces, and it's Charles Vallow is caught on a police webcam. Now, that's Laurie's fourth husband, now deceased. And he was pleading with the police for help. He had returned from a business trip, and his truck that he left parked at the airport was taken by Lori. She also emptied their personal and business bank accounts and refused to let him back into the house. Lori accused Charles of being possessed by the evil spirit of a deceased, fictitious person named Ned, who turned him into a dark spirit, and he became a zombie. No, I'm not kidding you. This is what she said, and this is what Charles is relaying to the police who find the whole story ridiculous, and really, I don't think take it too serious. Charles was trying to get the police to Baker Act Lori. That's kind of put her into protective custody and have her uh, put in a hospital for mental observation to assess her mental health. Each state, I guess, does it a little bit differently. In Florida, it's called Baker Act, and they actually take you into custody. Charles wanted uh, Lori to be assessed, have her mental health assessed, and get her help if she needed the it. The police were reluctant to or limited in what they could do. So Lori was brought in for an interview and mental health assessment, but it was like on her own 
volition to walk in and be assessed, and she passed and was released. Move forward in time to July 11th of 2019. Alex gets into an altercation with Charles Vallow at Laurie's townhouse in Arizona and shoots him twice, once in the chest, once in the stomach, and kills him. Laurie and Tylee are caught on police cam being questioned by police, and Laurie is visibly lighthearted and laughing and even making a joke. Also in 2019, after that incident where Charles was killed, Laurie is said to have expressed concerns that Tylee had turned into a dark spirit. Tylee protested, saying she was not a dark spirit, and asked Laurie to stop calling her that. So on September 9th of 2019, Tylee goes missing. The last known image of her alive was taken in Yellowstone National Park on September 8th of 2019, where she had gone with her mother, Lori, and her uncle, Alex, and her brother, JJ. Tylee never returned from this trip, and Lori never reported her missing. Move forward in time to September 22nd of 2019. That was the last sighting of JJ caught on security camera outside of his home playing with a neighbor. September 23rd of 2019, Melanie Gibbs and her partner visit Lori in Arizona for a little during the day, couple of hours. Melanie asks about the kids and she is told Tylee is away at college. Tylee had graduated with a GED at 16, so Melanie bought this and didn't ask questions. She was also told when she asked about JJ that he had been acting up and that his uncle Alex had taken him. Here, Lori engages Melanie in a conversation about how JJ had become a zombie. She points out things in his behavior and they discuss options for JJ. For me, here's where this gets a little crazy because Melanie is being uh, questioned in a police interview and she relays all this information. And when the police ask her what she thought, she said, well, I, I just didn't, didn't know. I didn't think anything. I believed Lori. And I never would have thought that she would have done anything to hurt him. Now, either Melanie is an extremely naive, pure-hearted soul, or there's something else going on here. So some of the options discussed between Laurie and Melanie was that perhaps Kay Woodcox might be an option. And Laurie agrees and says she is exploring returning JJ back to Kay because he had gotten in the way of her and Chad's business. Melanie and her partner leave and return to their home. Now, moving on, later, past this time in 2019, Brandon Bordeaux, Melanie Bordeaux's ex-husband, that's Lori's niece, calls 911 and reports he was shot at by someone in a Jeep with Texas tags. This matched the vehicle owned by the late Charles Vallow that was now in Lori's possession. October 9th of 2019, Tammy also calls 911. Tammy is Chad's wife, and she reports that someone shot at her while she was outside of her home. They missed her, but she was very upset. And of course, Alec is suspected in this. October 19th of 2019, Tammy Daybell dies in her sleep. November 26th of 2019, Kay and Larry Woodcox, that's Kay is Charles Vallow's sister, and they order a welfare check on JJ because remember, JJ was her son's child that Charles had adopted. On December 11th of 2019, Tammy's body was exhumed. On December 12th of 2019, Alex Cox mysteriously and suddenly dies of supposedly natural causes. On January of 2020, approximately two weeks after Tammy's death, Laurie and Chad were married in Hawaii. No one attended but her and Chad, but they had beautiful pictures taken. March 5th of 2020, Laurie is extradited from Kauai, Hawaii to Rexburg, Idaho. June 2020, Chad's property was searched and the human remains of JJ and Tylee were discovered. May of 2021, Chad and Lori were indicted for the murders of J.J. and Tylee. Chad was also charged for the murder of Tammy Daybell. 
Chad stands accused of the murders of both children and of his first wife, Tammy, with whom he had five children. June 8th of 2021, Lori is deemed incompetent to stand trial, delaying the process for almost a year. June 24th of 2021, Lori indicted for conspiracy to murder her fourth husband, Charles Vallow. April of 2022, Lori is deemed competent in arraigned for murder of JJ and Tylee. December of 2022, Lori again is deemed incompetent. November of 2022, Lori again found competent. Are you dizzy? I am. March of 2023, the judge rules to sever the cases between Chad and Lori. Lori will go to trial first since she did not waive her right to a speedy trial. Chad waived his right to a speedy trial and will stand trial alone. Lori's case is currently being tried in the Ada County Courthouse in Idaho. She faces the death penalty. She will not stand trial for the death of Charles Vallow until the current trial is completed. April 2023, autopsy report on Tammy comes back as cause of death, asphyxiation at the hands of another. Here's the GPS tracking. Alex had his location services turned on in his phone. So on September 8th of 2019 was the last time Tylee was seen in Yellowstone. September 9th of 2019, between 2.42 a.m. and 2.37 a.m., Alex is tracked at Laurie's apartment in Rexburg, Idaho. In September 9th, 2019, between the time of 9.21 a.m. to 11, a little after 11 a.m., Alex is tracked to Chad's property, specifically behind the barn, presumably burning Tylee's body. Tylee's body would be found in this area in a pet cemetery. After Alex leaves, Chad texts his wife the following message. I've had an interesting morning. I felt I should burn all the limb debris by the fire pit before it got too soaked by the coming storms. While I did so, I spotted a big raccoon along the fence. I hurried and got my gun and he was still walking along. I got close enough. One shot did the trick. He's now in our pet cemetery. Fun times. I should you not. September 22nd of 2019 was the last time JJ was seen. September 23rd of 2019, Melanie Gibbs and husband visit Lori and asked about JJ. And they are told he was acting up and Alex took him. In previous conversations, Lori told Melanie JJ had become a zombie. They discussed Lori possibly returning him to the custody of Kay Woodcox, as we already mentioned. On this day, 9.55 a.m., and 10, 12 a.m., Alex again is tracked to Chad's house, this time by the pond, presumably burying JJ. And that's around the area his remains were discovered. Here are some of the claims that Lori and Chad make. Lori was an exalted or translated being. She was a goddess who had lived many past lives on at least 21 other worlds. Chad had 31 worlds. She had lived five previous lives on earth. Chad had also. She could send spiritual fire to destroy dark spirits and zombies and people would die. Many people around her were turning into dark spirit zombies because of her exalted status. She was a target for Satan who was attacking everyone around her and killing them. This is why so many people around her died. Chad was able to create spiritual portals and he created one in her closet where she and he could spend time in spiritual commune. Chad also had the power to bless people with spiritual gifts. They all had the power to cast out evil spirits from people, animals, and things like computers. Sulema, Alex's wife for a few weeks before he died was given blessings by Chad that enabled her to control the weather and send fire to get rid of dark spirit zombies. It was only because five people were dead that I didn't allow myself to burst out laughing at the ridiculousness of this myth. How the hell do people fall for this crap? But they do and they do it all the time and it's it, it baffles me. But that's just laying the ground. I'll be back and I'll try to weave all of this into a story for you. Stay tuned.